Hey and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and video number 8 in our beginner's guide to Photoshop Elements. I'm starting off this time inside the full edit mode, looking at a document that may look similar to yours if you've been following along with me throughout this series. We have our original image at the bottom here, then we have a couple of colour adjustment layers controlling the levels of the image, and then the saturation. And on top of them, we have the image of the gorilla that we've extracted from its background using the magic extractor and then placed and resized it into this composition and then finally we blended him into his new background as well as we could by using this edge fur layer at the top of the stack here okay so that's what we've done so far in this video we're going to start off by retouching some of these elements on his fur we're going to remove this piece of grass he's got coming from his mouth as well as hiding some of these specks of white we've got down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in to the area I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to do that by coming up here and selecting the zoom tool from the toolbox. Then in the options bar I'll make sure I have the zoom in option active. And then I'll just click a few times around the mouth area to zoom in to this bit of grass. Uh, just about there should be good. Remember, if you want to center things, then just hold down the spacebar and drag. Much quicker than selecting the hand tool, of course. And you know what? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, seeing since I've still got the zoom tool active. And that looks pretty cool right there. Now, I'm going to come over here to the toolbox once again. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and select this little icon right here that looks like a plaster or a band-aid and I'm going to click and hold to gain access to the sub-menu and then I'll select the healing brush. Now if you've never used the healing brush before then you've just got to know that it's something of a miracle tool here inside of Photoshop Elements and you'll see what I mean very shortly. In fact I'll show you how it works right now and then tell you what's happening afterwards. So come over here to the problem area and we want to make the size of the brush be just a little larger than the size of the defect we're trying to heal away here. So first let me come up here to the options bar, first of all, and select this little pull down so I can see the brush options. And I want to make sure we're working with a brush that has a little bit of softness. So I'll make sure that we have a hardness somewhere in the region of 85%. And then we could select our brush size from here but the better way to work is to come down to this piece of grass and then use the bracket keys on the keyboard to either make the brush smaller or larger. Once we get it to the right size we need to set a source point for our healing and we want to source from an area of the image that's as close as possible to how we want the healed area to look. The best thing to do is to try and think of where you're going to start healing and then imagine both brushes synchronized as you move just one. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to hold down the Alt key here on the PC and that would be the Option key if you're using a Mac. And I get this little target icon which is basically asking me where I want to heal from. So I'm going to select an area so we're floating just slightly above the bottom lip and in fact before we confirm this as the source point, I'm going to come up here to the options bar and make sure that we have this sample all layers checkbox active. Because instead of sampling from one layer, I want to sample from the image as a whole. And then to keep things as flexible as possible, I'm going to create a new layer over here in the layers palette. And I'll call it grass, so I know what it's representing. And just make sure it's active by clicking on it. Now I'll return to the area of the image I wanted to source from, just above the bottom lip as I said before, and holding down the Alt or Option key, I'm going to click to set the source. Then I'll move over to the top of this piece of grass, mirroring the location I was before, and then I'm just going to heel down to the bottom of this piece of grass like so. And you're probably thinking that that's not working exactly as we planned, but watch this. When I release the mouse, the whole area just blends in with its surroundings as if by magic. And that really is the whole idea. The healing brush is designed so that the edges of your brush blend into the area you're healing. So it's great for doing work like this. And thanks to adding that grass layer, we have the ability to turn it off to see a before 
and then back on again to see how good things look now. OK, there's a few more bits I want to heal away on the gorilla. So I'll zoom out so I can see more of the image. Then I'll locate another defect. And so I'll zoom back in once I can see what I'm doing to the problemed area. And this time we can hit them hard and fast. So I'll get the brush about the right size. And then I'll Alt click here on the PC, Option click on the Mac to set the source point, and then click on the defect to heal it away. I'll do the same again, so I'll zoom out just a little, and then once I've found an area that I want to heal, I'll zoom back into it. I'll then adjust my brush size by using the bracket keys. I'll then set the source point like I did before, and boom, there it goes. OK, well, I think you get the idea. Great tool, really easy to use once you know the basics. And of course, all of our changes have been made on this grass layer, which, to be honest, we can probably get away with renaming Defect, just like so. OK, I'm going to zoom out so we can take in the entire picture. And just so we can see how far we've come, here's before our healing, and here's after. OK, so we've healed away our defects. Now we want to get rid of some of this dead space in the background here. We want to focus all of our attention onto the animals. We don't want to be distracted by the mud in the background, so we're going to go ahead and crop it out. Now ordinarily, I'd suggest you leave your cropping until the end of the project, perhaps just before you sharpen it. The reason I'm not leaving it until the end here is because I'm going to add some text, and I only want to enable myself to add text to the parts of the image I'm ultimately going to keep. So I don't want to add my text and then have to crop some letters out or something crazy like that. So I'm going to come over here to the toolbox once again and select the crop tool. And the great thing about the crop tool there is that firstly, once you've dragged out an area of the image you want to keep, when you release Photoshop Elements is going to darken away the area you're looking to crop out. Secondly, even when you release, the crop boundaries are still active. So you can drag out each side at a time until you get things right. Now I want to leave just a little gap between the edge of the animals and the edge of the crop because in the very next video in this series we're going to be adding a frame around the entire image. For now I'd say this looks good, so to confirm it I'm going to hit this little green tick icon at the bottom of the image and Photoshop Elements will crop the image for me. Perfect. Well, we've got one more objective to achieve in this video. We need to add some text to the image. So we need to go ahead and select the good old fashioned text tool from over here in the toolbox. And as always, we get our option for the selected tool up here in the options bar, starting on the left hand side here with font. I'm going to click on this little arrow to reveal all the fonts available on my system. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to run with this font here called Snap. Next I'm going to set the font size by highlighting the current text size amount and then typing my new value over the top. And I'm going to go for a value of 100 points. We'll resize things when we have the text in position. So we're not too worried about it being perfect right now. Now if I come down here to the image and click somewhere over here to the left hand side, I'm going to automatically create a new layer in the Layers palette. It's got the text tool icon on the layer thumbnail, as you can see, to indicate that it is indeed a type layer. After clicking, we also get a word processing style cursor flashing at me, waiting for me to input some text, which I'll do now by first of all turning on the caps lock, so I can write with capital letters, and then typing London Zoo into the layer. To confirm the text, I'm going to come up here to the options bar and click this little green check mark. And even though we are now committed to this text, we can still edit it by clicking the layer thumbnail over here to highlight the entire text string and then changing any of the attributes up here in the options bar. So for instance, I could change the text size to 150 points and the text will change straight away like so. To confirm all of my changes, I can once again just click the little green check mark and the highlighting will go away. And by the way, when you're doing that, multiple passes of going in and editing text and then confirming by hitting the green check mark, you're not 
causing what we class as a destructive effect. So you're not harming any of the pixels inside the image at all. So you can do it as many times as you need to. Now I've still got a bit of work to do in regards of the text here. So I'm going to tackle this another way. And that's by first of all ensuring the text layer is active in the layers palette. And then by hitting Control T here on the PC. That's Command T if you're using a Mac. To open up the transformation controls for the text layer. And now I can just drag it down to the bottom of the image. And then I'll drag this top right corner handle to make the text the right size. We don't want it to be too big because of the frame we're going to be adding in the very next video. So about there looks good to me. Finally I want to increase the height of the letters. And I can do that by just dragging the top middle transformation handle up until I have it where I want it. Just about there looks good. Once again, when I'm done, I can hit this little green check mark to commit to the changes like so, and that looks good. Okay, I think once again we've achieved good things inside this video. Coming up inside the next video in this series, we're going to finish things off by adding some effects to the text, as well as making a kind of frame to house our masterpiece right here, followed by a look at how we can sharpen up the details in this photograph to make things look as good as as they possibly can. For now, thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.